praise the name of the Lord. Listeners, thank you very much for allowing me to come to your house to share one and one encounter with you with the word of the Lord. And I thank God for what he is doing. This is Christmas and a Christ man. Everybody is believing God for great message and great word that is coming. Surely the Lord God has spoken to me about the year 2014 that we are going in. It's going to be a year of Exodus. If you want to know more and if you really want to know what is going to really happen in it, then I will suggest that you will join hands with us in World Conference Ministry International One Church in three branches and in here in the center capital of Netherlands. It is in Amsterdam. Uh, that is uh, uh, in Exchester number 100K on every Thursday we meet 6 o'clock uh, um, p.m. till uh, 10 o'clock p.m. and on Sundays is 5 o'clock p.m. till uh, 5 o'clock p.m. You can join us over there and you are going to be blessed. I have an important message because it's a Christmas now I believe that when it is Christmas, it's about Christ Month, and the, the day that the Jesus Christ, uh, we have designated that he was born. And so in that particular time, everybody prepared himself, uh, believing God for great and mighty things, um, ushering himself. It's a day, if it, it is a month of happiness, it's a month of encouragement, and it is a month of, reconcil of reconciliation. The indicative of it all is that I am taking you back to the church. I'm taking you back to the church because uh, Jesus, the other day, said that if you love me, Peter, build my church. And so I believe that in Christmas time is the time where God gave me messages for church itself, uh, the body of Christ. Uh, why don't you call somebody and tell the person right now, the servant of the Lord right now, I'm on Adam TV. I believe in God for great and mighty things for you and I. Join hands with me. Let us lift up fresh incense unto the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Father, we thank you and we give you all the praise. In this particular time, as I have joined with your people, I trust your power and your word to be manifested unto the lives of your people. Let Jesus Christ, my Lord, be exalted. Let every living thing listening to me, O oh God, be exalted. And let the praise of the saint come before thee. I pray for the people that they are sick in IMC, those that you are in jail, that may you be delivered and may you recover it all. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for those that you are looking for, where financial breakthrough and help from the government and the legislations that they are in, that may God, Father, may you touch them in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. We are talking about the church, and uh, when we talk about the church, uh, I will just, just enter in, uh, uh, I will really uh, jump into, straight to the word of the living God. What is a church? What is the meaning of a church? Now, we will really bring the particular meaning of a church, and the meaning of a church is the the, the community of those who believed in and the follower of Jesus Christ used to designate a congregation or a community or a Christians. Now, the meaning of the church need to be reintroduced or the church really need to be re, 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 redefined because it has been um, mis there have been a lot of misinterpretation concerning about the church and this is the particular time that we have to able to sit down to able to get into the undergettings and the subscriptions of the church itself and if we can really have the meaning as uh, it has been interpreted as a church is. And the reason why I'm saying that because there have been a lot of corruption in the church. Um, we have a lot of situation which I'm going to prick some of it all. Um, the, there come at a time in those particular days when we used to go to church called uh, the deeper lives. Um, you were not even allowed to watch television. And the, the, the church nowadays have picked doctrines and have become religion. And the real fact and the definition of the church have not been relevant to the people that they are coming. And if we don't stand to preach 
a good preaching and to speak the good speaking for the church to repent and come back into its original stage. It is a community, a community that they are followers of Jesus Christ. They, the church is used to designate a congregation, a community, and as Christians, all Christian. And so when we see a church, it's a community itself within a nation. And the community is to inspire and to change the nation. And so now God wants to change the nation. Now he needs a community. He needs a congregation. He needs a community. He needs a church to use it to designate a community. And the community to designate a congregation. And the congregation to designate the country. And so I'm asking, is this the job that the church is doing now? Which nowadays, because of various particular doctrines of uh, different um, churches have become religious. And now we, this one is saying that uh, I'm part of Methodist, part of Pentecostal, part of Charismatic. I am joined with the Catholic. Uh, I'm going to this particular church and we believe that our church is going to heaven. Let me tell you something. It does not matter the church that you are going. A day is coming. Jesus said the other day when the Roman centurion have come to him and have asked of him, that tell, uh, can, can you go and heal my son for me? And Jesus wanted to go and heal the son. And he said that I'm not wealthy. Uh, he was a Roman centurion. He said, just give me a word. And when you speak this particular word, I believe that my son will be healed. And then he told all his disciples, I have never seen such a fit uh, within a man. Uh, but I'm telling you that men will come from east, west, north, and south and sit in an Abraham bosom. He did not talk about a Jew. He did not recognize about a Gentile. It was not a Jew that is going to be in heaven. You don't need to be a Jew to be in heaven. No, a Gentile. But anybody who believed in the word of God and walked according to the word of the Lord and in the church, being is the church operating the way it needs to operate? Is the congregation operating as a church? And it is the community being impacted by the congregation of the church? We are not, we are not really doing much because we are focusing on criticizing ourselves. Let the black church arise and let the black church bring strong impartation. Let the black church rise up and impact their people. Because let me tell you something. This is a critical piece that you need to understand that here in Holland, nobody have a church. We don't have not even a church building. But yet still we are fighting among ourselves. Mm, that is my church and that is my church. You don't have a church. Because every day and now that you'll be moving from one place to another. It is time that they come in the church, that is the congregation, rise up and impact the community. And let us move as Christians. Let us grow as one. Just by the, the differences of you going to Catholic, Pentecostal, Methodist, Charismatic, we are all walking towards the narrow corridor. And you know one thing, the narrow corridor is that in the book of Matthew, chapter number 16, Verse chapter number 16 to uh, 18. Um, this is the word of the Lord and I'm reading it. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus Christ answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood have not revealed this particular thing to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And he said also unto, unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. What is going to really embellish the, the church is for us to recognize who we are following and who is leading us. And the thing that brings us 
equally. And the thing that makes us one is for us to follow the Lord God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm trying to help the church. I'm trying to work in the church, the body of Christ. We have another situation. And so now the situation that we have about the church is that it's not the church you go that will take you to heaven. But heavily, inheritance is an inside job. It's not the pastor that is you are following that will take you to heaven. You can really even follow Jesus Christ if your heart is not pure. Like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Like the Levites that followed Jesus Christ, trying to misinterpret his voice every day and night. He has something, they have something carnivorous to speak, to criticize cooking themselves to destroy his voice and destroy his word. But I say unto you that it's not about your procritus of uh, physicality, but it is an inside job that we do with the word of God within us by getting the understanding. And I need to learn all this particular thing because certain things in the church really get me disturbed. When I normally used to hear men of God saying, oh, false prophet, you need to um, be careful of false prophet. And they put all kinds of fear within us that we cannot be able to even hear the word of God clearly by opening our heart and receiving a strong impartation. I'm scared because I don't know if this one is from God, if that one is from God. Let me tell you something. Are we following men or are we following God? And psychologically, we need to be treated. See, we have nowadays a lot of pastors that they are filled with jealousy and enviness. And if it is not enviness, and if it is not jealousy, you will not look at your brother that is having the same blood. The same black man as you are black. And say he is not of God. If he's not of God, then who he is? Jesus the other day said, Those that they gather up with me are with me. But those that they scatter it abroad are not with me. And so is he scattering abroad or is he gathering? Is he talking about Jesus Christ or speaking about himself? See, by the fruit we will know them. And the, your fruit that is within you, pastor, Digging or bishop or a pastor or a prophet. The jealousy that is in you, relevant that it has shown, that everybody knows. Speaking against your brother. We have not given better preaching. We have not preached better preaching. That is the reason why we have problems in the church. And the church is not growing. And it is time that we get preachers that they can preach better preaching. We have many pastors but have few preachers. If you have something, you, you need something to talk about. I can give you a lot of topic to talk about. Because we have men. Black men. That they are not going to church. And it is time that some preachers rise up and able to speak to black men that why are they not coming to church? Why are they not giving their life to God? And let me tell you something. When the women filled up the church and the women were coming to the church, the pastors, the preachers, we empowered the women. And today, the women are those that they have jobs. Men don't have jobs anymore. You see, when they go to look for job, it is women that they pick them. Why? Because the women have been empowered. They have been anointed. Because when men stop following God, when men stop being empowered, when men stop working to God, doing the work of God, when pastors stop preaching to men, men started going to jail. Let the women don't get happy. You see, we have a lot of women and we have few men. Where are the men? All of them are in jail. And it's the time that the women rise up and begin to pray for the men that they are in jail. And it's no man, black men, they are in jail. Go jail and see. It is filled with black men. How come of it? 
frustration. But the solution of it, are men ready to apologize to women of the bad thing they have done in the past? And are women ready to really forgive men and rise up and pray to men and empower men because serving God is so much painful as a woman who is delivering a child. It is not something of just food or milk and meat. This is a serious thing here. I never know, nobody told me that it was so difficult to serve the Lord. Now, by giving my life to Him, that have really able to help me. And I think nowadays men need to rise up and speak to the women that they are wearing trousers and shirts. That it is time you take your skirt and brows and braziers and wear it and give us back our jeans and our shirt for us to go and work. It's time for us to tell them to sit at home so that we can go and work. A lot of things are happening and black men are rising against black men. And it is time that the black men, we see that we are fighting among our own brothers, fighting among our own sisters, are fighting among our own sisters. You are black for Christ's sake. Come to somebody's country, a nation, a city, a country that has been well governed and well solidified with a strong governation. And if we don't rise up and pray and cry unto God for help, for our brothers that is in need, brothers that don't, don't have no documents, brothers that don't have no jobs, have qualification, but they need to speak Dutch before they can able to have a job. And sometimes you have the qualification, it's either it is above the job or it is lesser than where you are looking for. So black men still is in depressed and oppressed. And that is the reason why many of our young people are on the street pushing drugs. That is the reason why many of our young people are ending up in jail. That is the reason why many of our daughters are ending up in, in prostitute because when uh, life cannot favor them as it is supposed to favor every single person, what are they going to do? They need to walk in the, in the, in the, in the shortcut and the shortcut is the place of destruction and it is time that the pastors need to preach a good preaching and have to speak a good messages to impact the youth and to impact our men and women to come back into reconciliation as a community and to designate uh, the society and, and the country because we need them and as I have point why Jesus said Peter upon you I will build my church why God said to Peter Peter, now you will be called Peter. You are Simon Peter, but now you will be called Peter. Because Simon means weak. Peter means strength. And now because he was able to know that Jesus Christ was the son of the living God, he has to now come out from being weak to become strong. And when you know Jesus Christ, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. If you know Jesus Christ, that he is the only way that you can make it. If you know truth, that is Jesus Christ that will help you out of the darkness that you are in. If you know that it is Jesus that is going to help you out of the loneliness, out of the pain, the rejection, out of the broken home, out of the, the marriage destruction. If you know that is him, he is going to bring strength for you to overcome and to persevere. And you cannot persevere without not him. You need him. And Daniel needed him when they throwed him uh, in the lion. And that is why they don't like me. Oh, but I turn the Lord that all oh, my own people did not like me. I turn the Lord that my own black men rejected me. I turn God. That you placed me in a refounding fire. But I was not there alone. Jesus was there with me. Kept the flame not to burn me. And as he has not given up on me. I will keep on worrying through him. And if somebody asks you. What is he running from? I'm running for my life. 
out of this civilization that have not come to the understanding of the realization of the exhortation of God's divine word that have set before us. The one that is at our back will go before us and will set a crooked path and make straight, make enough room for us. And I'm not going to really be coward and be following men. I have choose to run for God. And it is time that you do so. So start treating women in the right way. Because we are not treating them in the right way, they keep on crushing us. The men, we keep on getting arrested. And the women, I'm telling you, you keep on praying against us. By the time you recognize there will not be no black man left. All the good black and the beautiful and the handsome black men, all of them are in jail now. That is the reason why the women are frustrated now. And by time you see that you come out of regression into repression. And if nobody help you with good preaching and good message and prayer, you will go into repression and into suppression. And it will turn into depression. Because there are a lot of a lot of black women and men working with depression. And some of them are in oppression, obsession, obsession. They are walking and they are talking. They are walking and they are talking. Because of the lack of good preaching that is lost. And the lack of good preaching that is lost is because of self-sentence and ambivalent minded. It is because of jealousy and emptiness and, uh, 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 and criticism. Contentment. In our own physiological debates of the things you have seen, and let me tell you sometimes, sometimes the evil that you think are the angels to help you. Sometimes those that you think they will hurt you, they are those that they will help you. Sometimes the person you think that is a devil, he is the particular person that is going to help you. And I'm telling you mothers, telling you fathers, it's time for you not to think about yourself, but think about your sons and daughters. Those are the reason why we need to live in this particular world. Make sure that we are able to establish a Christian life as a church. Jesus Christ came to die for the church. But today, it's a wise people, wise people, that they can only see where the star is. And go there to be inspired by the star. They saw the star in the east. The king have been there, error, and have not seen it. But the wise men have seen it. Came and pay respect and get being inspired. The wise people are those that they are running to God, running to the church, running to the Bible, lifting up the name of God to be inspired because if your spiritual health is not inspired, your soulish health is not inspired, that is why you become a weak man. You are lying there and a young girl is taking care of you, collecting the government money. How will you drop and use the government money? How? When? When will you stop? I think a woman need to lay down and a man need to work. Now you the man lay down and don't want to work. And you will say, oh, I'm looking for a job. I don't get a job. It is because of lack of favor. And where, where have you lacked the favor? Because when you stop doing the work of God, God also stop doing you favor. And anytime you get into trouble, Jesus, if you deliver me from this one, this one, if I come out of this one, I will give all my life to you. And you sit there with criticism and contentment, contending with us. When we are talking about God inspiring you, 
telling you the truth. A word that cannot able to cut the edge, the edge pruning of your heart is not a good preaching. Preaching that don't change, preaching that don't 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 don't, don't bring a transformation is not a good preaching. And then when we sit down, we are not talking and lifting up the name of Jesus. We have a pastors that, uh, as for me, I'm, 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 I'm just blessing people, huh? bringing blessing people, blessing people with their marriage. How many people have you able to cancel of their marriage and their marriage have tarried for too long, even including yourself? If Jesus is not in, if the church don't come into its original stage, if the preaching is not preached in the Holy Ghost, if the preaching is not preached in the biblical principles of God, we will not have no transformation. And you see, we are so much immune. How many people we want? How many people we want to get? And I need a crowd of people. And we want to show big church. Because you are looking to the Americans. You also want big church. So all our desires, cry, zeal, prayer is to have a big church. But what about if God give you thousands of people and you cannot impart in them? What about God give you thousands of people and you cannot change them? And here are you calling many people but cannot change them. And the only thing is to criticize some pastor on the television, some prophet, you know, to uh, criticizing, criticizing some church. Uh, some church is not of God. Everybody is not of God, but only you. How can we use you in this civilization to build God's church? When you are filled with condemnation and the phys physiological debate, how can we use you in God's kingdom to build the city of glass, the latest Jerusalem, and the new heaven. How can we use you? When you are so much filled with negativity. Every time you just pick up on somebody. Because of the witchcrafts in your church. And I think sometimes pastors. We need to be careful of the congregations. And the people that come in front of us. Those that they came to complain. About another pastor to you. Here are you looking for a member, so you have to downside your brother. We are not training them. We are not leading them. We are sending them to hell by telling them what they want and what they need. We need to say and tell them the truth. The church is not a shopping mall or shopping center. That any time you have a problem, that is where you show up. It is a community that you need to be part of. A community, man of God, a man lying home, is a community. Are you part of this community using to designate the country? Are you part of it? All that they know is to talk negativity about the church, about the word of God, about the pastors. You see, the devil is down blinding us. And the thing is, it is simple. The people that they are tellers of the church, tellers of the man of God, men of God, pastors, prophets, they are not of God. So don't tell me that you are of God when you are really busy breaking another man of God down. Don't tell me you are church. Because yours is good. There are some ordinances that we are offering in churches that everybody can criticize about it because so far as you are in, it is okay. But if it was somebody's church that they are doing it, if it was charismatic church that they use incense, you would have ah, that, that particular place is filled with voodoo. But go to Catholic church, they, they, kumos, they kumos the whole entire, the whole entire congregation. They kumos it. Wait. And incense. What do they do? Incense. You get married, they prune you with an incense. What is the incense for? You criticize it. 
in the same way swan would criticize charismatic of his uh, um, of, of his oil but can we put our difference out our physiological debate can we put them down and say just by all our differences it is of one person that we seek for to come in our heart and to move with us one person who keep us away from the flames and take us out of the mali clay one person that will shut the mouth of the lion And keep the refounding fire not to burn us. It's one person that will split the sea and take us to the promised land. Is the good man who meets us in Shiloh. Have we come to that place? Have we come to that time for the church to be united? For the men of God to be united? For the people of God to humble themselves and focus on Jesus Christ rather than men? Are we ready? To come as a community, congregation, to be designated in the community, and the community to inspire the nation. Are we ready to walk in that role to lift up the name of Jesus rather than us? That we are the biggest Superman, first James Bond, come on town. Are we ready to put our differences down? Ah, this is Nigerian church. This is Ghanaian church. When Jesus comes, there will not be no Nigerian, no Ghanaians. Whatever talent that the Lord has given to Ghanaian people, they need to use it well. So, as the Nigerian need to use it well, we don't need to condemn Nigerian, and Nigerian don't need to downside Ghanaians, and Suriname don't need to fight against the, mm, the Moroccans, and the Moroccans don't need to fight against Antalians. We don't need to fight among ourselves, because we are blessed. We are blessed, and you need to know that you are not a Dutch man. And we need to be one. It's our brothers that we are killing. It's our brothers that we are killing. The man that is in jail, his wife and children are suffering. The man that you are killing, his, uh, he have a son and have a wife. And we need good preachers. That will preach to men and lift up men. Because the women are tired now. They are crying out for Christ's sake. The women are tired of praying every single day. Get out from your drinking capacity. Get out. Get out from your smoking habit. Get out and come to the church to be inspired to go through this therapeutically. Therapeutically. Time we hear good preaching. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to me. And I want you to connect with me on our radio. It's 24 hours bringing you an adulterate word of God for different pastors in different denominations and countries and cities. It is Angels Radio. If you want to connect to us, log on www.fatherbismarck.com or www.fatherbismarck.org and click on air and you will get us live and keep the doubt right there if you want to worship with us it is in Etchiston number 100k we start service on every Thursday from 6 o'clock p.m. till 10 o'clock p.m. on Friday on Friday uh, on, on Sunday we start service on uh, 5 o'clock p.m. to 10 o'clock p.m. And when we enter into January, we are really lifting up a conference with an apostle. And it has been entitled The Year of Exodus with Apostle Kwame Ofusu. Don't be a dropout and don't miss it. Find one way to connect with me. If it is prophetic word that God 
want to use it to deliver you prayer or fasting that we get to do to get this thing working and get this thing moving and get this miracle coming we we'll put our head in and we we'll make sure that Jesus is lifted in all the lives of men if you want to give your life to Jesus right now why don't you pray this short prayer with me it's very very important that you pray this prayer with me that my father in heaven in the name of your only begotten son my Lord Jesus I come before you and I believe that your son my Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth and died and on the third day you raised him up I believe that he is Lord I accept him in my heart to be my Lord and my Savior and to guide me help me Lord to do your will in Jesus name amen if uh, you have prayed this prayer find a better church Find on a doctorate word of God and a good preacher that will empower you and tell you the right thing and change your life. Or look for us, World Conference Ministry, one church in three branches, whether you are in Eindhoven, in Belgium, or in Amsterdam. Look for us. Your life will not be the same. God bless you. Shalom. See you again on Adun TV. Bye-bye. Which you with you, they are so.